Hey guys, how's it going? We're back. We're continuing with the second part of our eigenvalues and eigenvectors question. We did a video on this previously. So if you want to go back and see how we found these eigenvalues for the matrix uh, up here, just go uh, go video back and check it out. So now we're going to solve for the eigenvectors, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to solve for the eigenvector for both uh, lambda equals 0 and lambda equals 8. Okay, so for the first one we're going to start with lambda equals 0, all right? And we are going to rewrite our matrix with lambdas subtracted okay, from the diagonals. All right, And we're going to go ahead and plug this value in to this equation, this matrix rather. And you'll see that we get exactly the same thing as we had before. All right, perfect. Now, uh, when we're solving for the eigenvectors, it helps to row reduce. Okay, So what we're going to row reduce, we're going to subtract R2 from R1. right? And we're just going to divide the top row by 4. Okay, So we're going to say 1 over 4 R1. And what that's going to give us okay, is our reduced matrix okay, of 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay? Much easier to work with. Now, let's, uh, let's take a look at what the eigenvector is. Okay? So the eigenvector, if we call this, uh, this so we'll call this matrix A. Okay? Our original matrix is matrix A. And in order to solve for the eigenvector, okay, we need to satisfy this equation. So we have matrix A times vector x equals 0. Okay? So vector x here is the eigenvector. Okay? So we need to solve for x, and once we do that, we have it. We have the solution. So let's go ahead and rewrite our matrix here. Okay, so we have 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, and that's going to be times x1, x2, and that is equal to 0. Okay? So, you know, how do we solve this? Well, let's go ahead and let's write out the equations for this system. Okay, so we have x1, right? So this is going to be our x1, and we have nothing on the right side of the equation, so this is our x2. Let's move it to the other side negative x2, okay? And in this one on the bottom, as you can see, we have zeros here, so it's just 0 equals 0. So in order to solve this, okay, so you have x1 equals negative x2, right? So x1 and x2 could be anything, I guess, right? x1 could be negative 2, and x2 could be 2, or x1 could be negative 3, and x2 could be 3, right? It could be infinitely many numbers as long as they have opposite signs, right? So how we solve that is we're just going to say that uh, t is equal to x2. Okay, so I'm just going to come down here. So we have our dummy variable t. So t is equal to x2. Okay, and if we go ahead and plug t into this formula here, okay, we're going to see that x1 is equal to negative t. Right? Perfect. So let's make our vector now in terms of t for our solution. So we have negative t and t. Okay, and if we factor our t out, we have t negative 1, 1. Okay, so this here is our eigenvector. So that's a, a simple way. I mean, another way that you can do it is kind of like intuitively. So for example, if you were to find the vector, you know, if, if x1 were to be, uh, you know, negative 3 and x2 were to be 3, you could divide, uh, you know, the each term in the vector by 3, and you would get negative 1, 1. So that's kind of the idea, right? S similarly to how we reduce this matrix. So that's, uh, so our eigenvector for lambda equals 0 is negative 1, 1. Cool. Let's do our eigenvector for lambda equals 8. Okay. Okay, so we have lambda equals 8 now. So let's go ahead and plug that into our original matrix. Right? So 4 minus lambda, we're just going to plug in 8 for lambda. And we will be left with a new matrix of negative 4. And this is our new matrix, OK? So once again, we can, we can row reduce, right? And we can say that this uh, matrix here, so we can say R2 minus R1 and 1 over 4 R1. And that will give us a new matrix of negative 4, 4. And then we have uh, 0, 0, OK? And then dividing uh, the top row by 4, we're going to have uh, negative 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, cool. So that's our new matrix for lambda equals 8. And we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did before, right? With the t value here, okay? So let's come over here and let's just finish up this question. So we have negative 1, 1, 0, 0 
x1, x2 is equal to 0. Okay. So now we can say that, and so we have negative x1 on this side of the equation, right? So we're going to divide the other side by negative 1. And we have negative x2, we move that to the other side. Okay. And, well, that's a negative times a negative. Okay, so x1 is equal to x2. So if we do the same thing for t that we did before, so it, as you can see here, x1 is equal to x2. So any number would satisfy this equation, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, a million. Anything that we put into x1 would equal x2 as long as they're the same, right? So we can say that t is equal to t x2, okay? So we'll say let t equals x2, okay? And when x2 is t, obviously x1 is t, right? That makes sense because they're equal to each other. Okay, so we are, create our matrix of t's here and we'll factor out a t and there's our eigenvector 1, 1. Okay, so we have eigen, sorry I ran out of space here, vector is 1, 1 for lambda equals 8. Sorry about that. I know that's a little bit small, but you know you hear me saying it, so if you can't read it, I apologize, but we know what it is. And that's it, you know, so uh, it's a little bit tricky. You know, you have to just make sure that you know that you have to row reduce, okay, then you have to solve for the vector x in this equation here for both lambdas in order to get the eigenvectors. So that's why we just wanted to do a different video a separate video from the first one. This took a little more time, but uh, you know, we hope you kind of understood this and you're ready for your exam on uh, eigenvectors. Anyway, thanks for watching.